Welcome to Clawhammer, I am Kyle. Today we are going to be talking about making beer, specifically how long does it take to make beer. Uh, there is an easy answer and there is a long answer. I'll give you the easy answer first, but if you watch the entire video, I'll also explain why it takes as long as it does, and I'll give you a bit of information on how the process can be sped up. So there are four parts to uh, the beer brewing process. Brewing, fermentation, conditioning, and carbonation. The short answer is that for something like a pale ale, it takes somewhere between three and six hours to brew the beer, uh, one to two weeks to ferment it, and about a week to condition and carbonate. So from start to finish, an ale takes somewhere between one and three weeks for completion. The primary reasons the process varies so much for making an ale, for example, hinges on two things. One, the type of yeast used to ferment the beer, and two, the process used for packaging and carbonating. The process for a lager beer can take a lot longer. The actual brew day will take about the same amount of time, but the fermentation and conditioning process can last more than a month for example, um, we are brewing a beer with the local brewery for an upcoming project and they recently sent over the recipe we're going to use. Their fermentation and lagering period is going to take somewhere between six and seven weeks, so a month and a half. Uh, to me, this is kind of crazy. I don't know of any commonly made food that takes a month and a half to make. Most stuff these days is super processed and hardly takes any time at all. So. The two questions I had when I started brewing were, why does brewing beer take so long and how can the process be sped up? The biggest variables when it comes to the amount of time required to make beer are style, yeast type, the amount of conditioning required, and the process used for carbonation. So first, beer style. There is a lot of variability when it comes to beer style, um, some of which I'll get into more later, but. For now, I'm just going to focus on alcohol by volume or ABV. Low to medium ABV beer styles and very high ABV beer styles take different amounts of time to ferment due to the amount of sugar that yeast needs to eat and turn into alcohol. Very high ABV styles are going to take longer to ferment and beer styles with a lower ABV will wrap up a bit sooner. Second, there are two types of yeast used to ferment beer, ale yeast and lager yeast. Typically, ale yeast makes beer faster than lager yeast because ale yeast is fermented at much warmer temperatures than lager yeast. Ales are usually fermented somewhere near 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius, and at this temperature, yeast is more active and works much faster because the enzymes it uses to break down sugar work much better in this temperature range. In contrast, lager yeast is typically fermented at much lower temperatures, somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 degrees Celsius. And at this temperature, yeast moves pretty slow. The most obvious opportunity for speeding up a brew day uh, when it comes to fermentation is selecting an ale yeast over a lager yeast. You could also select a high temperature ale yeast which will reduce the time it takes to ferment beer to as little as three days. If you're dead set on using a lager though, high temperature lager yeast strains can be used which dramatically speed up the fermentation for that style of beer. Also, it's possible to ferment any lager yeast in a pressurized fermenter such as this one at room temperature and wrap up fermentation in about the same amount of time it would take to ferment an ale. The third consideration is conditioning. Um, some beer doesn't get conditioned at all and is more or less ready to drink as soon as fermentation is finished. An example of this would be a pale ale. Other beers, such as German Doppelbox, for example, may be conditioned for as long as six months at temperatures just above freezing, uh, which is called lagering. High gravity beers, heavy stouts, and extremely hoppy beers also tend to benefit from conditioning, which is usually done at serving temperature in the case of those beer styles. 
Another aspect of conditioning is beer clarity, which is directly impacted by something called flocculation. Flocculation is a rating of how well yeast drops out of suspension after fermentation is finished. Low flocculating yeast will remain cloudy long after fermentation is finished. This is going to make conditioning take much longer if clear beer is desired. To speed up this part of the process, use a high flocculating yeast which clarifies much faster, or brew something like a hazy IPA where cloudiness is acceptable. The fourth and final consideration is carbonation. And other than conditioning, this is the biggest variable in the time it takes to make beer. The process of carbonation can take as little as five minutes and as long as two weeks. The amount of time it takes to carbonate is entirely dependent on the type of packaging used to store and serve the beer and the method of carbonation used for each type. There are two types of packaging, bottling and canning or kegging. Um, bottling takes longer to package and naturally carbonate. Kegging is much easier to package and can take a lot less time to carbonate. When beer is bottled, after fermentation is complete, it is siphoned into individual bottles. Along with a bit of extra sugar, it's capped and then it's stored at room temperature. Residual yeast in the fermented beer reactivate and eat the newly added sugar. As a result, they create a tiny bit of extra alcohol and a bit of carbon dioxide. Because the bottle is capped and the carbon dioxide has nowhere to go, it is absorbed into the liquid, thus carbonating the beer. The upside to this process is that it's simple and it's pretty reliable. The downside is that it can take as long as two weeks for bottle carbonated beer to be ready. Slow carbonating in a keg takes about a week and consists of filling a keg with beer, attaching a bottle of CO2, setting the serving pressure somewhere between 10 and 12 pounds per square inch, and leaving it slowly carbonate over the course of about a week. This process is fairly easy and is a sure bet for perfectly carbonated beer. However, this process can also be accomplished in a fraction of the time using a method called quick carving. All right, if you like this video, hit thumbs up, subscribe, and check out this next video on making beer super fast. Also, there is a very detailed article on everything I just described here, plus a lot more on our website. We'll link that below as well. Thanks for watching.